lots to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a, I have a quick answer coming up for for our next topic, so we'll get okay. to this one first. Okay, yeah. perfect. So we're going to talk about free agents, who stays and who goes, and perhaps a contract prediction if you feel comfortable, if you sure. have an idea in mind. So I have a bunch of names here, players who played for the Maple Leafs yeah. this year. We're just going to speed round, roll yeah. through them. You say if they're going to stay or go, and then if you want, give me a contract sure. prediction as well. Sure. Number one, Nola Chari. Stays, and I think you want to lock him up for a reasonable term. I'd go three years at uh, $2 million or less. I like that a lot. That's yeah. like locking him into a deal similar to the Yarn Croke deal. Yep. A versatile player can play up and down your lineup, plays with pace and physicality. Nola Chari was like the perfect deadline add. And he'll be pretty cheap, so yeah. I really like that. I also think he stays. Great. Um, Zach Aston Reese. Uh, you know what? I thought he did a good job in the role that he was tasked with this year, so I, I think I'd keep him around. I, I, I don't mind him. I'd probably keep him around on a one-year deal, maybe a two-year, um, at a million or less. Yeah, I yeah. also agree with that. I think he was a versatile player um, who can play on that bottom line. Again, another player with pace and physicality. Yeah. But he's probably not going to be in the lineup every single yeah. night. And you want to keep him out of the lineup some nights to make yeah. room for other younger players who are perhaps trying to, to break in. So I would keep yeah. him around if the number is pretty low. Again, yeah. about $1 million or less. Because yeah. you have to factor that in. Do you want to be paying a player you know, over a million bucks if they're going to be out of the lineup? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, Michael Bunting. Yeah. This is an interesting one. The big fish on here. Um yeah, this is another guy who, who I feel differently about than I did at the start of the season. I ultimately, I guess, to not have a cliffhanger here, I ultimately think he's played his way out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and not for, you know, any particular reason other than just he's put up back-to-back 50-point -back seasons. Um, good player. He's going to ask for probably, you know, five-plus million dollars. I don't think he's worth that. I think he's probably better somewhere around four. Yeah. But I think somebody will give him that, and I just don't think that fits into the Leafs caps uh, structure as, as it's designed right now, or as it, it appears to be designed. So I think he's just a guy that, unfortunately, um, you know, barring some sort of change in how I perceive his free agency uh, prospects to look, I, I just don't. I don't think it's going to work out. I agree. It's similar to a Zach Hyman type player. Yeah, exactly. It's similar to an Ilya Mikheyev, yep. where. You like the player. He brought a lot. He yeah. complimented the core that you had, but he's just kind of played his way out. Yeah, and, and like I, I do think, you know, notwithstanding the, the, you know, the trouble he got into at times towards the end of the season and in the playoffs, this is a player I think they need more of. You yeah. know, I think he comes, he plays hard, he plays with an edge, he cares. Like, he does things the way, you know, I like as, as a, you know, somebody in hockey. Yeah. Um, so I, I wish they had more in their lineup, but yeah, I think as you've said, he's just he, you know he's kind of in the Mikheyev range where you just wish him all the best. You're a good soldier, and we just got to find somebody new. We got to go find the next Michael Bunting, just like how Bunting was, you know, the next Zach Hyman. Yeah, like we said off the top of the episode, he will look great in Pittsburgh Penguins black <laughs> and gold. Yeah, and I could see yeah. that for sure. Yeah, with, with Bunting, would you entertain? A longer term deal, say call it eight years, at a lower cap hit, similar to a Nick Paul in in uh, Tampa Bay. Would that be something that would interest you if I, you could get him at three and a half? I mean, I would entertain it. I would entertain it. It just, yeah, eight years is so tough, especially for a guy who he's like, you know, I know he's twenty seven or twenty eight years old now, but yeah. like, he's played two NHL seasons. It's eight yeah. years is a lot um, to take him to being. 35, 36 years old. But anything's possible. If, if, it, if it's at an AAV, that's really just not going to matter or is you know somewhat easy to move. Um, I believe Pittsburgh did something similar with Brandon Tannen when he was there. And of yeah. course, now he's in Seattle through the, you know, and, and they were able to to get him there, however they did. Yeah. Or, or Nick Paul. So yeah, like I would certainly look at it and take it seriously. It's just you know, that's not my preference. Right. Yeah. Uh, just brought it up because that's sure. been in, in yeah, the, yeah. the rumor mill. So. Yeah. Uh, next on the list, David Kampf. Stay really, or go? I really like David Kampf. I think he's a good skater. He's, he's a good bottom six player. Does things the right way. So I would do everything I can to keep him. But again, like this is a guy who doesn't score. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't bring any offense. I think he's just 
yeah, he's a penalty killer depth guy, so you, nothing crazy. I would try and go two, maybe, you know, maybe extend it to three years. Something at, again, two million or less. Yeah. Yeah. I think Kampf goes. I think on the open market, someone's going to pay him a lot. Well, As then, a defensive center, yeah. I just don't know if the Leafs are going to be able to stomach how much he would cost as... You know, yes, he's a third line center, mm-hmm. but then when they brought in O'Reilly, he turned into a fourth line center yep. pretty quickly. Um, and if he costs anywhere north of two and a half million, I just don't know if it's worth it. So I almost see the Leafs walking away from David Kampf and bringing in a third line center, whoever that may be, who actually might make a little bit more money, but be more of a versatile player and can bring some offense as well. That would be my dream for a third line center. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it's, yeah. If somebody wants to pay him, like, you know, no matter what I just said about Kampf and I really like him, I'm really high on David Kampf, but he scores 10 or less goals every year. Yeah. And if somebody wants to give him 3 million plus to do that, then that's fine. But I wouldn't do that. Yeah. That might be my bold take. I think someone will give him three plus million on the open market. Yeah. Uh, Next on the list, Alex Kerfoot. Gone. Yeah. Agreed. Um, there's just no chance they could bring him back. No. He made three and a half million. I think his next deal will be for about two million. Yeah, and I know the coach likes him, but he he I don't he had a, he had a hard time finding a role on this yeah. team. So we can yeah playing on the fourth line at yeah. times just didn't make sense. Ryan O'Reilly. I mean, I would love to keep him, but I just don't I don't think it's going to work out. I think somebody's going to give him a, a big contract. Mm-hmm. Great fit here. Another guy I like what he brings. I was a huge fan of bringing him in at the deadline. Um, you know, if I could keep him on a three or four year deal at four million dollars, then yeah, no brainer. But somebody's going to give him a lot more than that, so I just don't think it's going to work out. Agreed. I think he'll cash in one more time before he wraps up his career. Yeah. Could even be in St. Louis. Yeah, I don't know. Like St. Louis, I think they're in the in the midst of a retool right now. I don't know if he fits that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think he could get upwards of like six million. Yeah. On yeah. his next. I deal. agree. So, I agree. Um, because he was he was pretty useful for the Maple Leafs yeah. when he was here, so I think he priced his his way out. Unfortunately, Wayne Simmons gone. Yeah, not in the NHL. Yeah, I retired. Uh, Eric Gustafson probably gone as well. Yeah, I think so too. It's a bit of a shame because that was the player that you traded Rasmus Sandin for. Yeah. But as we all know, you did it for the first round pick. Yeah. Um, and he's fine. Like if they decided to keep him around, that's that's fine. It's just like you know keep around on a one or two year deal at a reasonable cost but I I don't I, I don't know he was their eighth defenseman going to the playoffs I just, yeah I don't think they I don't think they're dying to keep him around which is kind of crazy though by the way because he had more points in the regular season than Morgan Riley I know I know <laughs> I know but then you see him and it's just like he, he's just he's very one dimensional yeah um but again like if they kept him around like hey you know there's certainly no harm with having you know 0.5 points per game defenseman uh as your sixth, seventh, eighth yeah, guy, so in your back pocket, yeah. Like I wouldn't mind keeping around, but yeah. yeah anyways, I, I think someone probably pays him not a lot, but yeah. like more than the Leafs would want to pay him as their seven. Agreed. Uh, Justin Hall, I think he's gone too. Yeah, I can't believe Justin Hall has lasted this long in this market. To be honest, <sighs> yeah, I was I was surprised as well, but he's taken enough. He's taken enough yes. heat. I'll, I'll, I'll spare him. Yeah, I know. He, I know he's a good guy too in the locker room. Yeah. All the guys love him. He yeah. seems to be a real glue guy, but it just doesn't make sense to keep. Yeah, him. I've, I've, I've honestly, I've been a bit of a Hall defend, defender where I don't think he's as bad as people think he is, and yeah. and clearly the coach has quite a bit of trust in him. But these playoffs were not good. Even no. even even those of us who may be a little more like neutral on him, like. Yeah, that was it. Was not good. When he plays up in the lineup, it's yeah. very evident that he should not be playing against top competition. Yeah. Play him on the third pair, that's fine. But yeah, I, I think he's done in yeah. the market. Uh, Luke Shen. I like Luke Shen. I liked what he brought. I would do everything I can to keep him around. But again, big time is into the fact that this is notwithstanding how he played with Morgan Riley, he's not the guy who's going to play on your top pairing all year. No. He knows that too. He's at the point of his career where he's moved around a lot. Hopefully, he wants to settle down a little bit. You know, if they gave him two, three years at something under two, yep, preferably under one point five, 
um, then yeah, I would do. I, I I really liked what he brought. I really liked what he brought. But I think he's he's going to be more of a depth role than uh, than he played in the playoffs. I agree. That was shocking that he was on the top yeah. pair. Yeah, and it worked. And, yeah, and that was their best pair in yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, it's Matt Hunwick. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Uh, or Ronald Hainsey. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You can just you can staple there, and you know what he's going to do. Yeah, but predictable. Yeah, but I don't know. Like I think Luke Shen comes back, but you're right. It's gonna it's got to be at a number that's reasonable. Which I think, you know, by all accounts, Luke Shen and, and just going back to his press conference at the end of the year, like it seems like he's willing to. I don't want to say take less, but like. Be reasonable. Sign a reasonable number. Yeah. He's not chasing money. No, he's chasing lifestyle. Been on, yeah, he's been on the league minimum contract for a while now, and he's been on the move for a while. So yeah, if you, you know, and if you if he's comfortable here, which I'm sure he is, having done two stints, and they're comfortable with him, which I hope they are after the way he played, then yeah, you just make it work sometimes. Okay, Victor Mete, and then I've got one more. That's yeah, more interesting. Yeah, I think Victor Mete is probably gone as well. Death guy that's just. I don't know, it's not a lot of room for him unless he wants to come play in the the AHL. But yeah, he's he, somebody will somebody will probably look at him. You know, a team that needs some depth on defense and say you can come in and be our sixth, seventh guy, and, and you know we'll give you a league minimum. But he's just going to be too far down the the lineup for uh, to make sense for him to want to come back. Agreed. Yeah. Um, okay. This is maybe the biggest free agent. He's, yeah. a, he's a restricted free agent, Ilya Samsonov. And I'm going to need you to give a bit more of an explanation sure. for this one, uh, not only because he's the biggest free agent on the list, but because I'm going to open the blinds, too, and give us some <laughs> more light. So, Ilya Samsonov, go ahead and keep talking, and I'll yeah, be back yeah, in yeah. one minute. I'm listening. Yeah, well, I think you, he's. I think you have to bring him back because you don't really have a choice. Like, you're not going to have, uh, you know, despite how he played the last few games of the playoffs, you're not going to have Joseph Wall starting games for you, you know, 60 games next year. Uh, Matt Murray is not reliable, and you need to do what you can to move him out. So he's he's your best option. He's sitting there. He's he's under your control. The fact that he's an RFA, not a UFA. So you do what you can to uh, to use that to your advantage and to make it work at a reasonable price. But he played well enough this year throughout the entire season, um, and uh, is your best option of the three. So I think you do whatever you can to make it work. Um, you know, at the same time, he's had. He sat ups and downs throughout his career. He's still somewhat unproven. This was his first season where he kind of pillar to post. You can say that he was good, mm-hmm. um, you know, even though there may have been a few dips in there along the way. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm looking for a little bit more to give him that big contract. Yeah. Uh, you know, circling back to our goalie <laughs> discussion earlier. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think I would be comfortable giving him something in the range of four years at, you know, I'll call it under four and a half. I'll okay. Call it under four and a half, preferably under four. Yeah. Um, if it's but I think, the but I think it's around four. I think it's around four. I think if it starts with a four, I'll be a little nervous yeah. going into the season. Not because I don't think he's a good goalie. I think this year he kind of proved that he can be a starting goalie in the NHL. You know, without Matt Murray being available virtually yeah. all year. Um, out of necessity, he had to be the guy. Yeah. And and he fared pretty well for the most part. The only thing that does concern me about Samsonov is just the way that he kind of carries himself in the net sometimes. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but... You're the goalie guy. Well, right. Yeah. So I, I don't want to say that, that he's scrambly as like my main point, but that is something I notice and... and non-goalie people will tell you this too if you just watch a guy and he's kind of all over the place like just doesn't give you a lot of confidence as opposed to a guy like you know even Joe Wall who's a bit of a bigger guy even though he's unproven yeah. he just his movements are more crisp and controlled and I like that about yeah. him at the same time though Samsonov is, is a very explosive goalie and he's able to make that acrobatic save if you need it but that wasn't even my main point yeah. my main point is that Sometimes when I watch him, like the way that he favors certain areas of his body when he gets up, like after a, a play where he's stretching or or plays where he makes a difficult save or there's traffic incoming or, or there's contact made, I just don't love it. It almost looks like he plays up every interaction. And this is just me as a fan watching, and I have, I have no evidence of, of anything to, yeah. to back up what my eyes are seeing, but it just didn't give me a ton of confidence compared to when I watch 
other goalies, even smaller goalies who play a similar style, who are explosive and, and kind of scrambly in the crease. Like he just doesn't give me a ton of confidence in the net. Not taking any yeah, away yeah. from him, he had a great season, but uh, I I would just be nervous going with a, a contract that starts with four million bucks. I mean, like yeah, would I feel one hundred percent comfortable? No, I wouldn't. But. You know, I think something else the Leafs need here is some certainty. They, mm-hmm. They've turned over a lot of goalies recently. Um, you know, some of them better than others. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I feel like I feel like you need to at some point say, okay, here's our guys. We're committed to them. We're going to help them grow. Samson is still a relatively young guy. You can let Joseph Wall develop and take the reins, and maybe you know, maybe two years from now he's ready to be the number one guy, or at least kind of split the tandem with him yeah you know so maybe maybe i revise and i say okay instead of four years we go three years at you know let's call it let's still call it four okay. three years at four million with samsonov you know i i think i'd be comfortable with with something like that maybe i should have gone that instead of with the four years yeah but you know i i personally you know i don't want to have to be dealing with who's our goalie going into next season every year oh. at some point at some point you know, I would like to say, here's our guy, we're going to ride with him, and, you know, we can be confident in him, and we know that he's going to be there for us next year. And I feel like he's, he's you know, through one season, earned that respect at not a super long-term deal. Yeah. Um, but that's just my, my thoughts. That makes a lot of sense, because that conversation about the uncertainty in net is exhausting. Yeah. It's been going on for the last four years or so. Yeah dating back to when Freddie Anderson was the guy but even then it was like okay who's his backup is it Curtis McElhaney who was probably the best one until Jack Campbell because in between it was like Calvin Picker and like uh, Garrett Sparks and you know they had a bunch of guys so that never gave me much confidence and then Jack Campbell Peter Mrazek obviously neither of those really worked out yeah and and, you know at the same time with this too it's like you know we'll put we'll put Matt Murray to the side for a sec because I don't think I don't think there's you know much desire to bring him back but Wall has made really good strides especially lately he's he's looked good when he's had to go in but he's also so unproven. And so, you know, I would also feel nervous. As nervous as I would be if I'm going four years at, let's say, north of $4 million to Samson, I'd also be nervous going in at a real short-term deal, like one or two years, and, you know, also having Joseph Wall. Because there's a chance that, you know, maybe neither of them is the guy, right? Yeah, but, uh, definitely. Anyways, yeah, that that's definitely going to be the, the most interesting one. So For sure. And... Last year, when we did this podcast, talking about our ideal offseason for the Maple Leafs, we had a lengthy discussion about goaltending options yeah. via trade. John yeah. Gibson was the yeah. name that came up quite a bit, um, and he is still in trade rumors. He has officially yeah. requested a trade out of Anaheim, and two other goalies are also being rumored uh, or, or being thrown into the uh, trade rumor mill, uh, specifically at the draft that's coming up. Connor Hellebuck Mm -hmm. is a name that I've seen a ton, and Thatcher Demko is a name that I've seen a ton, as well as Carter Hart, which, by the way, we haven't been checking our phones. That deal might be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there there are a few names out there. Are are there any names of those guys who interest you in in terms of bringing in a goaltender via trade? Do you think that's even an option for Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I, I feel like there was a lot of momentum in that direction last year just because of you know, the fact that Campbell was leaving, Mrazic was not great, which is a bit of a understatement. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now I think, yeah, you have a guy who, notwithstanding him not having a contract, he's he's under your control. Um, Joseph Wall has, has looked the part. Um, you know, so I think there's enough confidence there where I wouldn't be so keen to look around and give up a million assets to pluck a guy out of who knows where. Um, you know, just as just as defensemen go for expensive uh, packages, goaltenders probably go for even more expensive packages. Definitely. So, um, you know, I, I certainly you maybe make a call if you're the GM just to do your due diligence. But I, I, I wouldn't be banking on the Leafs giving up, you know, a, a, a huge package for Connor Hellebuck. I mean, agreed. Yeah, agreed. I just don't or think it's feasible. Go. Yeah, I don't think it's feasible. Though, how nice would it be? To have a guy like that, and this is even excluding yeah. John Gibson because yeah. 
Gibson has been kind of down over the last few years. He hasn't been great, but those two in particular, Demko and Hellebuck, how nice would it be as a Leafs fan just to have that confidence in one of those guys for the next however many years? It would be very nice. It would be very nice. (laughs) The uncertainty conversations that have been looming over our heads about goaltending would be out the window. You ought to develop one eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, who knows? Like, they drafted Dennis Hill to be last year. He's a guy coming up. Yeah. You know, he's a big goaltender. I, I think he's like 6'6". Six, six. Signed him already. And yeah, he signed. He was an overager in the draft. Uh, I think he's Swedish. He played in the Swedish League last year um, and was with the Marlies for a bit. Maybe he's a guy that they look to. You never know about Arthur Atiyamov or Vacheslav Pet- Peksa, yeah. those two guys who they drafted. you're just naming names I've never heard of. Yeah, right? well, those are two goalies that Dubas drafted years yeah. ago. But anyways, so... They do need to draft and develop a guy. Right now, it seems like Joe Wall is the best candidate. But yeah, goaltending, man, that's why Samsonov, that's that's the most important. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. 